Hey besties! For today's craft tutorial, we're going to do some needle felting. I am actually really sick today. I have a cold or a flu or something really gross. But I didn't want to ruin my schedule by not uploading things. So today we're going to learn how to do something really easy. A needle felted pom pom string. This string is really easy to do, completely adorable and can be used for many things including a necklace, various other jewelries, or just to decorate your house. I've tied this one to the back of James's computer. <laughs> Needle felting is a really fun craft and it's really easy to do once you know the basics and if you have the right supplies. This is, however, one of those crafts where you do need to buy the right supplies. Trust me on this one, I tried to make my own needle felting needle and it did not go very well. <laughs> you can pick up the supplies you need at pretty much any craft store these days for a couple of dollars though. So it's not a huge investment to get started. Today we're going to be making the most easy thing in the world, a ball. This is a good project if you're just starting out because you can just practice the basic skills. <laughs> I would probably point out that this one is not for kids because the needles that you have to use are very sharp and you are basically just dabbing away near your fingers, so it's probably not going to be a good mix for kids. <laughs> You're going to need some wool roving. It comes in little balls like this, which when you untangle them are just long bits of wool. You can use acrylic if you want to, but wool is nice. <laughs> I'm using three colors today, purple, green, and pink. They go really nicely together. You'll need something to do the needle felting on. You can buy these purpose-built brush thingies, or you can also just use a scrubbing brush. Or you can do what I did before I got these supplies, which was just use some old foam, like the squishy soundproofing foam, that works really well too. Anything that the needle can pass into without getting caught, basically. And most importantly, you'll need a needle. <laughs> these come in all kinds of different sizes, shapes, colors, whatever. I'm using a fine one today. The difference between a needle felting needle and a regular needle is that when you run your finger along here, you'll be able to feel tiny little barbs, which are little cutouts all along the edge of the needle. So what these do is when you stab through the wool, um, they grab all the little fibers and push them deeper into the other fibers and it mats it together to basically create felt. The more you know. <laughs> so I've got two kinds of needles. This one only has one point and I really like it because the handle is wooden and it's very easy to hold, it's quite ergonomic. And this one which holds three, at the moment there's only two in there but it does hold three. And this one is from the brand Clover which is a Japanese brand that sells all kinds of needle felting supplies. So if you guys need supplies make sure you check out the Clover stuff. I think this is also, this is also Clover. <laughs> Lastly to string our pom poms together we're going to need some yarn and a regular needle. <laughs> Okay, before my nose starts running everywhere again, let's get started! <laughs> First thing to do is pull some of the wool off the end. Roughly work out how big you want the finished ball to be, and keep in mind that once we start felting, it will get a lot smaller as everything mashes in together. So we're going to use about this much. Pull apart all the strands so it gets really messy, and then shape it into a ball using your hands doesn't need to be perfect, just like approximately a ball. Again, please be really careful that you don't stab yourself. These needles are really sharp. Place it on top of whatever you're doing your needle felting on, so I'm using the brush. Now, stab it a few times, and you'll notice that it starts taking shape and keeping the shape that you put it in. Continue shaping it with your fingers so it looks more ball-like, and stab it to keep it in place. This is another one of those crafts where you can get out all of your internal rage. <laughs> it's stress releasing! Continue turning and stabbing and turning and stabbing until you get it into a proper ball shape. You can see on this side, it's all nice and smooth and this is the side that I've been holding on to so it looks really puffy still. So now what we need to do is turn it over and start poking the puffy side. There you have it, it's a ball! Yay! 
a ball. <laughs> you can see that there's still stringy bits all over the outside. You can either snip these off with scissors or if you want to get a little bit more technical, place your needle next to the ball so it grabs them and then just stab it through. What this does is poke all of those little edges just back into the center of the ball. Keep in mind the more poking you do, the tighter all of the fibers are going to weave together inside it and so the tougher and harder and more felt like it will be rather than just being a ball of wool. <laughs> Another thing you can do to hold all of the fibers on the outside down is just get a little bit of water on your hands and then roll the ball around like this. That will stick everything down together and you'll have a nice smooth ball. Repeat this about a billion times and then you'll have enough for a string. Now all we need to do is string them together. Thread your needle and stab it through the middle of the ball all the way through. You want to be sure to be right in the middle and then add it along. Ta-da! <laughs> you can actually knot the thread between each of them if you want to make sure that they are perfectly spaced apart, but it's not really necessary in my opinion. And there you have it! You have a pom-pom string. I actually saw these for sale at Maya and they were ordered like $30 or something as Christmas decorations, but it is much cheaper just to do these yourselves. And it's quite relaxing. I think they make a pretty cute necklace too. <laughs> so once you've mastered these, you can branch out into all kinds of more complicated shapes like stars or hearts or all kinds of cute things. Maybe we'll do some of those next time. If you want to see a tutorial on how to do those kinds of shapes, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the craft tutorial. Let me know if you give it a try and I'll see you next time. Bye! If you like this video, then chances are you'll like my others too. Subscribe to my channel, then check out my blog at violetlabo.com. There's even a super cute puppy. <laughs> Ugh, my nose is running everywhere now. Of course it is. So once you mastered balls, we can get... <laughs> so once you've mastered doing little balls, you can... Not much better. No. <laughs> so once...